In the United States, homelessness is a direct cause and effect of failed policy. It is symbolic of a brash and brutal country giving up, allocating resources elsewhere, discarding those who need help the most. This is a choice to have our streets packed with the unhoused. It can be anywhere, from New York City to the state of Washington, Los Angeles to Oakland. It shows this is a bipartisan issue with no solution from powerful lawmakers in sight. It's impossible to not recognize this. The United States, with the highest GDP in the world per global PEO services has simply turned its back on its citizens, our fellow Americans. And yet no matter the political affiliation, some use the unhoused as a photo opportunity. One thing no person should do is judge a book by its cover though. Everyone has a story. And that's where we introduce Jeremiah Armstead, interviewed here by NBC News. For years, Jeremiah says he moved from shelter to shelter with his mom and two siblings. He was living off food stamps. What would you say were some of the the darkest times in your life? Sleeping at beaches. He would also sleep in his mother's car. He lived in a DV shelter with his family. The trials and tribulations of life exhausting him at every turn. He even admitted to Fox 11 Los Angeles it would be a variation of getting rest overnight in an automobile, hotels, and as he stated earlier, beaches. Homelessness pushed Jeremiah to fight harder for his goals. Can't is not in my vocabulary. He excelled as a student in California and as an athlete. Let's pause here. On that front, Jeremiah did not start hooping until he was 14 years old and he took it up at a shelter. He became obsessed with the sport. After a long day of school, he would hoop for hours on end. Still, he kept his family's struggles a secret, asking those who gave him a ride to drop him off at convenience stores to hide his homelessness. Many of his friends would wonder why he made such requests, noted Good Morning America's official website. This is a child who deserves to just show what he can do. His mother, Mindy Brooks, also spoke with NBC News. He would tell the Washington Post, basketball was an outlet for him. It became his sanctuary, a good yet motivating distraction from what was going on in his life. Staying with his family, which includes his mother, sister, and brother in a DV shelter, the wheels started going in motion. That's when Keisha Daniels, who was with the nonprofit Sisters of Watts, got in touch with this man, Stephen Bernstein, a Fisk University graduate and CEO of We Educate Brilliant Minds. Bernstein said he had only about a month to get the job done. Thus, he got to work. Bernstein, who is white, is a former baseball player at the school. He says he was the only Caucasian person at the HBCU campus during his time there from 1988 to 1992. Another wrinkle, the head coach of Fisk University's basketball team is former NBA player Kenny Anderson. The Athletic noted Anderson was forced into the streets of New York after being evicted numerous times. Then the breakthrough happened. Through Sisters of Watts and We Educate Brilliant Minds, Armstead was accepted to Fisk University, and Anderson added him to the basketball team. Importantly, to help Jeremiah's college education, we will leave links down below in the description box. Any amount helps, guys. Jeremiah took a lot on at a young age after I became a victim of domestic violence, said his mother. I wanted him to have a chance at a happy life. He's always looked after his little brother and sister, and he's always tried to look at the positive side. I've been extremely proud of him his whole life. I'm thankful that people were willing to take a chance on me, he said. Even though I went through a tough time, it made me the person I am today. I'm excited to see how it all turns out. Jeremiah has since completed his first season at Fisk University.